This is Jesse Goldberg Strasser with Lansing Lugnuts third baseman Mitch Ney. Mitch, what is the best team you've ever been on? Oh, wow. That's tough. Well, obviously, probably this team. You know, we got a lot of good players on here. You got a good offense, good pitching staff, uh, good D. I think this would probably be the best team I've ever been on. You know. Did you play a position before third base? Yeah, I played, uh, well, back when I was like 15, 16, I played shortstop a little bit. And then I uh, made the switch over to third base my junior year, and I've stuck there ever since. What do you enjoy most about baseball? Um, what I enjoy most about baseball is uh, probably like the cat and mouse game between the pitcher and the hitter. That's pretty fun for me, just like um, trying to figure out what he wants to do to me. And, uh, you know, like when you, when, you get a, when you hit a ball hard or you get a hit or whatever, you know, you kind of win. And that feels good. It's a good feeling, you know, going back and forth. He gets you, you get him. I like that. That's fun. The fun thing to talk to you about is your hitting approach, that you understand that there's much more than simply he throws it, you hit it. When did it occur to you how much more there was? Um, I think from a young age, uh, my grandpa always talked about approach. That was like the main thing that he would try to, you know, talk to me about. And, um, you know, like sometimes it's good to keep it simple like that, but there comes a point where you have to have an idea. And I think that... You know, if you have an idea at the plate, you got a way better shot than if you're just up there. Well, I hope I get a good pitch to hit here. You know, you got to have a plan, and um, it kind of occurred to me, especially when I got into pro ball. But like when, in summer ball in high school, when you face some better pitchers than you're used to, you got to have a plan because they got some good stuff. They're out there trying to get you out. You know, they're trying to do a job, so you got to do your job and, and get them. What was draft day like for you? Um, it was pretty fun. It was exciting, and then when like. You know, the draft started to get closer. I got a little bit, I had some nerves, to be honest. It was a little nerve-wracking. And, you know, you work, you work, you know, four or five years in high school. And, I mean, even before that, to, you know, get an opportunity to play pro ball. And you don't know what's going to happen. You know, you don't have a crystal ball. So it was just kind of one of those things where, you know, watch the draft, wait for the phone to ring. And it was just kind of play it by ear. It was really nerve-wracking. But, you know, obviously once I got selected, it was – it was really cool and, you know, an honor and it was fun and got my opportunity to play pro ball and, you know, here I am. Even before that, was there a moment while you were in high school where you realized how many scouts there were watching? Um, I mean, probably, just probably my senior year, you know, right before the draft. I mean, I played my junior year, um, you know, I, I knew scouts um, because I played on, you know, like uh, summer league teams where they ran it. Yeah. So I knew scouts pretty well on like a first name basis, but... You know, like not a, there weren't a ton of them out there at the games until my senior year, and it wasn't really until before my senior year that I thought maybe, oh, I could get drafted here. You know, so I mean, it didn't really occur to me until probably my last year of high school. Those summer league games, those summer league teams that you played on, what advantages did that give you? What did you learn? Um, I think I, I went to a tournament in North Carolina before my senior year, and that really showed me. Because that was supposed to be, you know, the best talent in the country. Like 150 kids were there. And it really showed me, you know, what was out there. You know, it took away from, like, you know, the mystery of, you know, what, what else is out there for me. So that really kind of put it in perspective for me. And um, that, that was a good tournament, you know, to kind of show what else, you know, I'd be facing. And I know I played, I played against a lot of the same guys in, in these leagues that I did back then. So it's kind of cool to kind of put it all together. Who is the toughest pitcher you've ever had to face? Toughest pitcher I've ever had to face? Um, probably Chapman. <laughs> yeah. What was that like taking on a role this Chapman on yeah. Major League Rehab? Man. It was it was it was a great experience. I was kind of nervous before the game, and then the, he got out there and started throwing, and I was like, man, this is gonna be fun. You know, how many times do you get to do this? And it was the only way I describe it is like his ball was just quick. You know, you know, there's guys that throw hard. You know, it's like you know makes the glove pop it's like oh that was hard his was just quick it was it was just like it was it was there and then it wasn't it was just a real blur and, and you know it had to be on time fouled a couple off and it was like man i don't know how much quicker i can be there you know but it he's a he's a great pitcher and it was a, it was a blast was there anyone who contacted you after the game wanting to ask you about your line out to the left field warning check yeah well my buddy he's a big reds fan he lives in arizona we went to high school together and He's, uh, he was like, oh, you got to face Chapman, that's cool. And he was just asking me about it. It was, it was pretty cool, you know. 
Speaking with Lansing Lugnuts third baseman Mitch Ney, what is the next thing that you're working on? But the next thing I'm working on, I, I mean, every day, like in every, you know, facet of the game, I'm trying to get better. But, I mean, just refining my, my hitting approach, obviously. And the second thing would be making my mechanics consistent. That's a big one. You know, just so I go out there every day and give myself a good shot at hitting the ball hard, just keeping everything real consistent. And then in the field, just, just making the easy plays, making the routine plays, and um, just really focus on, you know, catching the ball and throwing the ball out there. Let me overgeneralize for a moment. In April, you were right on it. Mid to late May, you didn't seem to be. And now here we are again, and you're right on the ball. What's the difference? Um, I mean, it's kind of a tough thing about, I, you know, I had a tough May, you know, and, and then at that time, you know, you have a couple weeks that aren't so good, and it feels like it just goes by like that. And you just can't can't put it together. And you know, I started to simplify it. You know, started to think about what I what I've done before to make myself successful. And you know, pulled out of it and um, started to feel better. And and it just kind of started to you know just turn into confidence. And now every night is I'm feeling good at the plate. You know, like every guy that's out there, I'm like, okay, I got a shot. We're gonna get a good pitch to hit, and we're gonna hit it hard. But uh, yeah, it, it really has been a big difference lately. I feel a lot better and more confident. How about defensively? Is there something that you're working on? Um, I mean, defensively this year, I felt like it's been it's been good at times, and sometimes I make some some rookie mistakes, if you may. You know, like throwing balls I shouldn't throw. Um, you know, just, just stuff like that. You know, transfers that I'm not. You know, it's just easy stuff that I need to clean up. Um, fielding, you know, it's it's always gonna be a work in progress. Everything's. A work in progress, but you know I f actually felt better this year than than I have la than I had last year. What is the best defensive play you've ever made? Ooh, best defensive play I've ever made. There was one in the playoffs last year in Pulaski. It was it was um, I don't know exactly how I got to it in time, but it was like a chopper behind the mound, and I came up and barehanded it, and kind of threw across my body. It was it was it was uh, I kind of surprised myself on that one. It was yeah, that was probably the best play I made in a while. Last year was your first professional season. After you were drafted, then you missed that pro year in 2012 due to injury. How tough was that? Um, you know, it was tough, but the way I think about it is, you know, I, I've been healthy for the last two years, so, you know, it, it was tough, but I, I kind of missed my, um, like, orientation. You know, that's kind of what I missed, and, you know, I'm, I'm just happy that I've been healthy all the way through, you know, the last two years, so... You know, that, that was tough, but in hindsight, it, it wasn't the end of the world. Um, still, I'm still getting my bats and, you know, still getting better. How are you spending the winters? Ooh, uh, in Arizona. The, yes. Not really the winter. Off season. But, yeah, I mean, it, it only gets below 40 for like a week, and then it goes back up. So Everyone panic? Yeah, everybody's like, what's going on? Yeah, but, um, yeah, spend, spend time with my family, uh, hang out, hit, work out, you know, it's typical off season stuff. Your grandfather, Luke Klimchak, beyond you, everyone that I speak with, scouts, coaches, who come from Arizona, they say what a force he is in the area. Describe what he is to you in terms of baseball and your relationship. Um, I, he's just he's just always there, you know. I can call him, you know, when, when things aren't going well. And, and it's more than just baseball with him. It, he talks to me a lot about, like, his experiences, like, you know, bus rides, clubhouse stuff, and it's more, he, he's just trying to help me take in this experience for what it is and, and have fun with it, and, you know, when I'm not going well, he just tells me to hang in there and, and keep keep playing hard, and, you know, he, he's just, he, he gets it, you know, he's, he's been through everything that I've been through in a different era, but still all the same stuff, and, um, you know, it's always, it's awesome to have somebody like that, you know, I'm pretty lucky and fortunate that I do, not a lot of people do, but... So it's, it's good to have a guy like that who's got a lot of experience in the game. Was there another coach who really made a great impact in your life? Um, I, honestly, he was my coach. Um, my high school coach um, taught me a lot about competing and stuff like that and, and uh, had a great time with him in Arizona. Playing, we played in a state championship one year. And, and uh, other than that, uh, a couple scouts coached me. But other than that, it, it was pretty much just just my grandpa and my high school coach and um, a couple of high school coaches, and that was it. I mean, pretty uh, pretty short coaching list. Speaking with Lansing Lugnuts third baseman Mitch Ney, we see you out here on the baseball field. 
What other talents do you have? Um, I picked up guitar two years ago. That that's a ta that's something that I kind of fill my time with. I don't know if I'm that good, but you know I have a few things that I know how to play, and and uh, I can learn I can learn stuff. You just got to give me a little bit a little bit of time. A lot of people just you know I can listen to a song and play it, but I got to kind of get in there and really practice on where you know what chords I need to hit. And it's fun though. I, I have fun with it. I like fishing too. Fishing's good. Mountain biking. I like mountain biking. It's fun. But there's just a couple things. Finally, what is the craziest thing you've ever seen happen on a baseball diamond? The craziest thing I've ever seen happen. Yeah, there's got to be something I've seen this year that's been crazy. Um, I can't. I can't think. Oh, well, there's something that happened in high school. Actually, a kid who plays on Great Lakes, Curletta. He hit a ball to me in a state championship game, slow roller. I throw it to first. The first baseman um, catches it and then kind of gets off for a tag, you know, just real simple tag play. And uh, Curletta need it out of the glove and hit it, basically hit it with his knee down the line, and he got a triple out of it. Unreal. He got the third base on it. It was, it kind of put a, you know, a nail on our side in the first inning, three runs three to nothing could have been out of the inning with none but that was probably the craziest thing I've seen happen and probably the most unfortunate time possible but that was that was pretty crazy. Mitch thank you very much yeah, for your time. No problem. Lansing Lugnuts Mitch Ney. I'm Jesse Goldberg Strassler and this is Lugnuts Baseball on Big Country 92.1.